In this video, we're gonna get our hands dirty with some real file exploration from checking permissions to uncovering hidden treasures in device files. We got an exciting adventure ahead, so grab your ones, I mean keyboards, and let's get started! So I'll be using VirtualBox with Ubuntu install. Ubuntu is a Linux system like many others. And while the content of the root directory might vary slightly depending on the specific Linux distribution, the overall structure remains consistent. So let's explore. Okay. Let's first log in um, as a root. Let's just type sudo su dash. Let's see what we have here uh, using uh, ls command. Okay, so we can see that the first column shows us some permissions and indicates whether it's a link, alpha link, uh, directory, default directory, or if it's a regular file, dash indicates it's a regular file. A symlink or a symbolic link is a special type of file that acts as a shortcut a pointer to another file or directory. They allow access to the target files via a symlinks path. Now we can check if we have any mount points and check the file system type. Okay, um, we can use lsblk command to check that. So we can see that we have three partitions here sda1, sda2, and sda3. Also, we can check out the size of each partition. Let's use DFT to check the disk space usage along with the file system type. So we can see how much space is still available on each partition. Um, okay, we can also see that we use extension 4 for partition SDA3. And just to remind you, extension 4 is a widely used file system type. It manages the physical storage and supports large files. Look, there is also partition SDA2 that uses VFAT. And VFAT is a file system used for compatibility with all the FAT file systems. VFAT differs from extension 4 because VFAT is designed for simpler and cross-platform compatibility with some limitations on file sizes and file system features. While extension 4 offers advanced features like journaling, large file support, and improved performance tailored for modern Linux systems. Okay, and then here we can also see um, temporary FS file system type. If you want to guess what it stands for, yes, you guessed it right. It's for temporary file system. And now let's try to use the mount command to list all currently mounted file systems. Okay, so we use this mount column T. Okay, um, in the left column, we can see what file systems we have mounted in the middle column. We can see the mount point, for example, system file sysfs is mounted on sys, and then we have udev, which is mounted on dev. Look at this, we have dev. Um, SDA3 partition, which is mounted under the root, and that's expected, okay? Now, let's navigate to one of those directories. Okay, so let's go to dev. Okay, and now let's list all the files. And you probably noticed... Um, you probably noticed an array of different colors here. Let's see, we have a turquoise, um, turquoise, which usually means it's a symlink. And then we have blue for directories. And then file should be shown in the default color, but I don't see any here. Then we also have a bunch of brown files and there are some highlighted in green files. 
and brown is for device files. Device files are special kind of files that provide an interface to hardware devices like keyboard or mouse, for example. These files act as a gateway to hardware because they allow software to read from and write to a device. The green highlight usually indicates that the files are executable files. These are files with execution permissions, meaning they can be run as a program or scripts. Okay, what else we can do here? Let's try to find device files for our mouse. Okay, so it should probably be under the input directory. Let's head over to that directory. Okay, and um, let's list what's inside. All right, so we can see we have a mouse zero, mouse one, and mouse two. And this represent individual mouse devices. Let's go to by path directory. Okay, CD by path. Um, and see what's inside. Okay. Okay, we can see that there is a lot of turquoise color here. And we already know that turquoise is for symlinks. The symlinks point to different device files, right? Um, for example, if a mouse link points to an input device file for a mouse connected via USB. The symlinks provide a consistent way to refer to input devices based on their physical connection. The kernel and associated devices files manage the functionality and interaction with these devices. So the source code for the input device drivers isn't directly visible in the root directory. Source files can be downloaded separately from kernel repositories and typically they found on the user slash directory. Oh, I'm sorry, user slash um, source director. Um, they are publicly available for different kernel versions. Okay, let's check our current kernel version here. Uh, we can use this command to name and dash r. And here we see which one I'm using right now. And let's navigate here to cd user source here have different header files downloaded there are different types of header files they typically provide definitions different interface specifications and can contain other information i don't have the source files downloaded yet so let's try and download them together okay um, so we have already know the kernel version we need, which is 6.5. So we can just head over to the kernel website and find the corresponding tar file. Let's copy the link. Okay. Now we can head over to our terminal window and just type we get and we can pass the link. Now we can instruct the files. We can instruct them by using the tar um, xvf command and then we need just the name of the file here um, now it's going to take some time okay let's reconvene later uh, okay so now we have the file extracted and let's check them out okay let's first head over to this linux directory Okay, um, we can see now what's in there. Um, so our mouse source file should probably be on the drivers. Let's see, okay. Um, okay, on this list. Okay, so there is a bunch of stuff in here. We are looking for a heat folder. Heat folder. Oh, here it is. Okay, so let's head over to our heat folder and let's open it. Okay, and let's see what's in there. Okay, so there are a lot of source files here, but our mouse source file should be inside USB HAD directory. Okay, let's go in there and let's see what's in there. Okay, voila. We found it okay since we already here let's just look inside and we can do that like this and this is our code for usb driver 
let's just scroll down let's scroll all the way down here it is usb mouse driver so now we know that it's really the mouse source file um okay because it says it's right here okay so let's exit the file and we can exit the root now using this command uh, control d all right tech wizards i think we've hit a good stopping point for today honestly we could spend the entire day diving into a magical labyrinth of the linux file system and still discovering new secrets but before you log off here's the fun challenge for you check out your kernel version with the command uh, uname-r and then go on a treasure hunt for linux public drivers for your system download them and explore where they land on your file system trust me it's like finding a hidden treasure Remember, whether you're diving deep into device files or exploring the mysteries of virtual file system, Linux is always full of surprises. So stay curious, keep experimenting, and who knows what you'll uncover next. And thanks for joining me on this journey today. If you enjoyed the adventure, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more tech magic. Until the next time, stay awesome and keep those systems running smoothly. Whew.